This is the story of the struggles and dreams of four men as they strive for Olympic gold, an intimate record of their personal lives, loves, ambitions and fears on the long road to Sydney. Steve Redgrave is the most successful and famous of the four. He's won four Olympic golds, the last two in a coxless pair with old Etonian Matthew Pinsent, who he teamed up with in 1990. But at the last Olympics, he decided to retire at the age of 34. If anyone sees me go anywhere near a boat, you've got my permission to shoot me. I do not want ever want to get in a boat again. I've had enough. But once again, the lure of gold proved too strong. In 1997, Steve and Matthew formed a new Coxless 4 boat with Tim Foster and James Cracknell. They began recording personal video diaries, knowing the next four years were not going to be easy for any of them. Just getting so fed up with it. Is it worth... Is it worth it? Is the Olympic Games worth worth going through this hassle. Basically we need to pull the rabbit out of the hat. If we're going to win we need to pull a very sizable rabbit out of a very small hat. Um, I think the odds of doing that are, are pretty slim actually I have to say now. The four have to bond if they are to succeed. No one's seat is guaranteed but newcomers Tim and James are the most vulnerable. James Crackman is the youngest at 25 and has never won a major race. Everybody who rose in Britain really wants to be in, in the four. Um, and I can't see that changing over the next four years, really. So, you know, Matthew's got two gold medals and he's on, he rose on the same side as me, so... Um, yeah, you know, basically everyone's after my seat. Well, half the people after my seat, half the people after Tim's seat. Tim Foster, who is 27, has a bronze Olympic medal and seems more relaxed, but even he is in no doubt about the reality of the situation. Three and a bit years uh, till Sydney, which is a big one, but we very differently feel we've got to win every race, which is a different mentality. Um, not really being in that situation before, I mean, to win was always nice, but uh, it's almost like we're frightened to lose in this one. Of time. Jürgen Grobler is charged with bringing the four together. Former East German Olympic coach, his priority is now the Coxless Four, Britain's best hope for an Olympic gold. And be still positive to the work we are doing and switched on to the work we are doing, even as hard and hurts, you know. The weight of expectation falls heavily on Steve's shoulders. If he gets his fifth gold, he will make Olympic history. So it's crucial that the team comes together. It seems like, to me, it seems like you've gone off on your own to do your own thing. Um, but we're we're trying to bring us together as a unit on and off on and off the walls. Okay. I mean, I only did it. Um, it's basically what <coughs> the way I interpreted what Jurgen said. I think James can get sometimes carried away with the intensity of it all. It doesn't matter what he's done. It's not good enough. Um, and. I think because maybe that you haven't had the success in the last few years, um, that your enthusiasm sometimes boils over um, and, and becomes slightly too intense. The first real test of how the boat is running will be the 1997 World Championships in France. They gear themselves totally to this, fine-tuning every tiny detail. And then suddenly the world goes into a state of shock. Princess Diana has died, and the four are faced with representing Britain at a time of national mourning. 
it's sort of hitting us a bit actually now how how big a deal it is at home because see some of the press articles it's just, we're so separated from out here and, and all we're, and so focused on on what we plan to do for the whole year that it really doesn't mean anything to us because it just doesn't matter because we're just so separated from it. So what do you reckon to tomorrow then? Um, we could win by clear water. We could win by a length and a half. Depends on what the other crews have decided, really. If anyone comes with us, they're going to pay for it. Yeah. It's the same situation as we we were in in the pair for a long time. Yeah. Was that if people were going to chase us down, they were going to pay. Really. Well, I was really quite nervous during today. And then I've had moments, and it comes and goes. He's James going to shit himself tomorrow. I don't know. It'll be quiet. And I won't mind if he is, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with being nervous. I don't imagine him getting too nervous. Mm. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm more looking forward to being halfway through the race than the hour or two hours beforehand, which is just a nightmare. We don't feel like eating, we don't eat two hours before, we don't feel like eating, we feel just sitting there the walking on, just getting, getting ready to go. Trying to stop the, you know, be too aroused, make you too tense, it's all... It's going to be... A tough day tomorrow. James gives his video camera to his Danish girlfriend, Emily, while he goes off to compete in the biggest race of his career. This is it, the first final day at the World Championships in France, and uh, today is a big race that everyone has been waiting for. You must be totally full of butterflies in your stomach. Good luck! Great Britain lead from lane three. James Crackler behind doing a sterling job. Never won a medal of any colour, World Championships or Olympic Games. This will be his day. Getting the competitive situation, you really get the best out of Matthew then. He's really impressive when he uh, chips it down. And you know Steve, so strong, so dynamic. And Tim sets up the rhythm really well between Steve and Matthew. I was sitting there in my bus ticket. <laughs> Foster there between Vincent and Redgrave has had quite a lot of experience in Cox's Fours. He's had bronze and silver at World Championships, bronze in the Olympics at Atlanta. It's just all about setting down the standard there. They're looking back and saying, well, look, you know, you're not going to get near us today. Great Britain take the gold. Crackler and Foster side by side, equal partners with Redgrave and Pinson. That is as it should be. What a great row in the final. What a great row. Just everyone all hooked up together and just flowing along. Just felt easy. Brilliant. As a mark of respect, we wore our black bows and the flag only went to half-mast and we, we had our heads bowed during the, during the national anthem and that made an impact on people and I think we did absolutely the right thing. This means that I'm a world champion and it feels pretty damn good, I have to say. The morning was so difficult with uh, um, the pressure and the nerves and everything else. And then we just went out and had an absolute stormer of a row.